Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. We appreciate you checking it out. Another video in our ventilator series um, on assist control, pressure control, or assist pressure control, or just pressure control. One of the two main types or modes of invasive mechanical ventilation, uh, both in adults and pediatric patients, uh, although um, we're adult intensivists here, so we have less uh, insight in the pediatric world. Uh, we'll be talking about pressure control today. Um, as explained by the scalers, we'll also talk about um, triggers, cycles, targets, the different settings on pressure control, and all that good stuff. For those that are new to the channel, and this is the first time you've seen one of our videos, we do just want to um, shout out some previous videos we've done on ventilators, especially if you are not super familiar with scalers. Uh, this is our pulmonology playlist on our channel. We'll link all this in the video's description as well. Uh, we got a whole bunch of ventilator videos on here, but the one we wanted to point out was this, ventilator waveforms, scalers and loops, basic concepts, pressure, flow, and volume. This is the introduction to scalers. Uh, it will be very helpful if you're not familiar with this terminology uh, in understanding the video we're doing today. Uh, we'll link it in this video's description. We'll also link it in the top right corner of the video here coming up in a second. Um, definitely check that one out if you are less familiar with pressure flow and volume scalers um, or just want a refresher. Uh, in any case, quick 30 second break for the introduction. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you right back. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So today we're gonna to be talking about assist control pressure control, um, also known as ACPC or assist pressure control, um, or many people in the clinical arena just refer to it as pressure control. And that's what we're gonna to refer to it as uh, for the rest of this video. And we're gonna talk about it in relation to the pressure time scaler, the flow time scaler, and the volume time scaler. Before we do that though, we wanted to talk a little bit about pressure control. So on a ventilator, there's lots of different things you can set, but the main four things that you can set are the PEEP or the positive end expiratory pressure, the FiO2 or the fraction of inspired oxygen, the respiratory rate, and these three, we uh, have done this exact same video for volume control. Again, we'll link it in the video description. Um, these three are all present in both pressure control and volume control, right? Volume control being you control the volume and the uncontrolled variable is the pressure. Whereas pressure control, you control the pressure and the uncontrolled variable is the volume. And we'll talk more about this in a second. But in both of these modes of ventilation, these three settings are the same. The PEEP, the FiO2, and the respiratory rate. The setting that is different between the two is the fourth. And in pressure control, you're setting the inspiratory pressure. Whereas in volume control, you're setting the tidal volume or the cc's of air that is being pushed into the lungs with each breath. So this is volume control. In pressure control, you're setting the inspiratory pressure. And what you're saying, what you're telling the ventilator is you're saying, listen, with every breath, I want you to give this pressure, right? This millimeters of mercury. And that pressure is going to create a tidal volume. The tidal volume is the cc's or milliliters of air the patient gets with each breath. That's the tidal volume. So the inspiratory pressure you're setting is gonna create a tidal volume, but the tidal volume created is gonna be very patient dependent, right? It's gonna be based on the patient's anatomy, physiology, their lung compliance, all these different things. So this is the uncontrolled variable. This is the result of the inspiratory pressure you set. The nice thing about pressure control though is that the ventilator, it won't go above this inspiratory pressure usually. So if 
you're worried about you know barotrauma or certain damages from high inspiratory pressures in volume control because in volume control you're setting the volume here and the pressure that results from that volume is uncontrolled you're saying i want the patient to get 500 cc's per breath of tidal volume and whatever pressure that takes is what that pressure takes in pressure control you're saying i want the patient's lungs to just get this pressure and whatever tidal volume that pressure creates is the amount of tidal volume they'll get with each breath all right so the tidal volume is a result of the inspiratory pressure you set so there's no nothing in here where you're setting a tidal volume you're setting an inspiratory pressure and whatever volume results from that with each breath is the volume that results with each breath and you can go let's say they're getting too much tidal volume you set the inspiratory pressure at 30 millimeters of mercury and it's resulting in a tidal volume of 700 cc's per breath and you're like that's way too high well you can go down right maybe you'll decrease the inspiratory pressure to 20 millimeters of mercury and that pressure being lower you could picture right if you're pushing in less pressure the tidal volume is going to be lower maybe the patient then gets 500 cc's per breath and most of the time and this is ventilator dependent most of the time this is the pressure above the peep so let's say i set this at 15 and the peep is at five that means the total pressure they're getting with each breath is 20 15 plus five um, uh, again a little ventilator dependent okay so you're setting an inspiratory pressure in pressure control you're controlling the pressure how do we understand that with the scalars well the scalars look different in pressure control than they do in volume control or a different mode of mechanical ventilation and that is based on three different things, right? Anytime we're thinking about a mode of mechanical ventilation, a way we can help to understand it is based off of what the ventilator does with each breath. And what cr creates a breath? Well, for the ventilator to create a breath, there has to be something that triggers the ventilator to give a breath, right? So that's how the ventilator decides it needs to start a breath, because this is a machine. It's not thinking for itself. Um, you need something that triggers the ventilator to give a breath. You also need the ventilator to target something, right? It can't just push in air randomly, right? It has to target something. And then you need the ventilator to cycle or to end the breath, right? And all these are things that the ventilator isn't thinking about. It's not, you know, you need to set this. And in pressure control, this, these three things differ than volume control. So in pressure control, the th thing that triggers a pressure is the time. And this is actually the same as volume control. So you set a respiratory rate at 20, and the patient can take breaths that count towards that 20. But let's say the patient isn't taking any breaths. 20 breaths per minute, that means one breath every three seconds. And if the patient doesn't breathe in three seconds, that triggers the patient or the ventilator to give the patient a breath. So time is the trigger. Every three seconds, that patient should get a breath because I set the respiratory rate to 20 breaths per minute. And in pressure control, the target is the pressure you're setting. So you're setting a pressure, again, let's say it's 20, and you're telling the ventilator that you want them to give 20 millimeters of mercury with each breath, and that's what the ventilator is going to target. It's going to target 20 millimeters of mercury. All right, so then how does it cycle? How does it end the breath? Well, time as well. Because each breath, and this is a more advanced setting, but each breath only lasts a certain amount of time, right? So let's just say, I'm just making this up for the sake of easy numbers, but let's say that you said the breath can last for two seconds, right? The ventilator will cycle or end that breath at that two seconds that you set it. And ventilators are smart. They let the patient also contribute to some of these things if the patient wants a longer breath or a shorter breath but not to too much because this is ventilator desynchrony which we talked about in some of these other videos that we'll link in the video uh, video description um, it can cause ventilator desynchrony or the patient not cooperating with the ventilator but in pressure control the target is what you set right it's going to target a certain inspiratory pressure so if we think about the scalars then if we go down to the scalars um, this is the pressure on the y-axis versus time scalar, this is zero pressure, and then this is all time. This is the flow versus time scalar, this is zero flow, and this is the volume versus time scalar, and this is zero volume. The volume versus time scalar is very similar for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much the same. Uh, it has the same look between volume control and pressure control, all right, it looks the same. And what it is, is this is a single breath. Every triangle is one breath. 
And what happens in this breath is the volume goes up, right? It's positive. This is inspiration, or this is when the ventilator is giving a breath. And you get to whatever you set, right? 400 cc's, 500 cc's, the tidal volume. And then the volume starts to go down. That's when the patient is expiring or breathing that air out, right? And this is going to be your whole breath, your tidal volume, 400 cc's. They inspire to 400 cc's and then they breathe it out. And it should go back to zero after each breath because you are expiring the same amount of tidal volume that you inspired. And if this doesn't happen, you can get breath stacking and some of these other things. We actually made a video on it. We'll link it in the video description. Uh, auto peep breath stacking air trapping where we talk about uh, what happens when you're not expiring all the air each time. Yeah, and that's each breath, right? This is breath one, breath two, breath three. You inspire, right? Breathe, ventilator gives the breath, then you expire or breathe out all that air, it goes back to zero. And this is your tidal volume, or how many cc's of air you're getting with each breath. Same thing, inspiration, expiration. And these again, look the same between volume control and pressure control. The pressure and flow scalers look different between the two though. And this is what pressure controls looks like. And it's all about the target, right? In pressure control, you're targeting a pressure. So you get this flat top because you're saying, I want it to be 20. Right? So the ventilator says, great, this here, 20. So the ventilator cranks up the pressure with each breath to 20, and it just leaves the pressure at 20. So you get this flat top, and that's just sitting at an inspiratory pressure of 20. And then when the breath's done, it drops back to not quite zero here, because this is the peep, which we talked about in the, that uh, other video that we mentioned, the introduction. Um, so we won't go into it here as much. Um, but every breath, right? So that's breath one. Breath two, it goes straight back up to that inspiratory pressure of 20 you set. It leaves it there for the whole breath and then it drops back down to the peep. That's breath two. Same thing for breath three. And that's why you get this flat top because it's a constant pressure that you set, right? You're like, I want this pressure to be 20 millimeters of mercury for the whole breath. That's what the ventilator targets and that's what it keeps it at for the duration of the breath. There's no in between, you know, it doesn't ramp up and ramp down. It just goes straight up to 20 because that's what you set. It stays at 20 for the breath. When the breath's done, it goes back down, right? Breath starts again, straight up to 20, stays at 20 for the whole breath, back down. The flow that results from that looks different in pressure control than volume control as well, right? Um, the flow here is going to be dependent on how that pressure was given, right? So the pressure just ramps up to the pressure of 20. So flow starts at zero, right? This is when there's no breath being delivered. There's no inspiration or expiration going on. And also the ventilator gives the 20 millimeters of mercury and the flow goes way up, right? And then it stays at 20. So if you picture what this looks like, because this is the pressure doesn't slowly ramp up. The pressure just goes to 20 and keeps it there. So that initial up to 20 creates this steep upslow for flow. And then as it holds it at 20, the flow actually starts to slowly decrease. It's still positive. You're still getting flow into the lungs, but it starts to decrease up until that breath is done, right? So this here lines up with when the breath ends. So at this point, there's no more inspiratory pressure being given. So it drops down to negative flow because the patient starts to breathe out. So this here is inspiration. This here is expiration because the patient is breathing that air out. So there's negative flow, inspiration, and then I'm blowing out expiration. So there's negative flow up until the breath is over. And then there's zero flow because there's no inspiration or expiration. And same thing, the pressure starts, it gives a pressure to 20. So the flow shoots up quick. The pressure then stays at 20. So you're still getting a breath in, but it's not, you initially get a and then you start to keep that pressure constant. So the flow slowly decreases while it's still going in until the breath is done. And then you start to expire. Right, so inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expiration. And that's why you get this triangle flow for pressure control because you're getting the set pressure that's cranking up to the pressure you want and then it's staying there, right? That's the pressure scalar staying there. And as it stays there, you don't get this huge increase. The flow is still positive, but it's kind of ramping down until that pressure is done, 
All right, so this is characteristic of pressure control. Um, you get the flat pressure top because that's what's targeted. And the flow does this huge increase and then slopes back down towards zero. All right, hopefully that made sense. Definitely check out our volume control video where we go over the scalars in the same sense. And we actually have a, an additional video where we control both volume control and pressure control scalars right next to each other. Um, so check that out too. It kind of brings all the concepts together. We appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.